Oh, hey there. Today, I'm going to show you how I made my own top for the boat and some tricks on how to install the snaps that will save you a lot of heartache. So, tag along. So this video is going to be about putting the snaps on and putting the poles in. I am going to show you some pictures of actually patterning up and doing the top. Um, I didn't do anything as sewing it. I am very, very amateur when it comes to doing these tops. I've only done a couple others in the past um, and seen people do them quite often in my marine life. But I'm going to go through sh showing you how I did the snaps and I'll walk through right now how I pattern this up. So this is a bow rider and it had a cover, main cover over the back and a cover up the front. I don't like that because up the windshield area, the water runs down and actually drips down onto the floor and rots out the floor eventually and you get, it's constantly wet and moss and everything growing in there. So I prefer it when the cover goes right up over the front and covers right over top of the windshield and right down to the bow. So that's what I wanted to make. So I'll explain to you, I took the main open top here and then I took the bow cover and opened it up. I didn't take it apart because I wanted sort of to go back if I really messed up. I would have those covers to at least cover up the boat. So what I did was I just basically folded it in half so that I had that extra seam and added a little bit on the edge and patterned out half of the top. I'll throw in some pictures here. So I patterned out half of the top and so that I would get my pattern for this and the front. Then what I did, and I'll put a picture now of that, So you can see I patterned out the windshield, laid it over with basically some construction paper and patterned out the windshield of what I wanted to fill in those two pieces on the windshield here. So let me walk you around and show you how it turned out. So pattern that up, that seemed to work out all right on the back. Here's the front section. So basically this is as the original section was. The back is as the original section was and it used to snap up here across the top of the windshield. And so what I added, what I made, I mean I made the whole cover but I made this center section. So on the sides here, um, basically you sew in the edge piece and then sew in a binding on the inside here which gives you support for your snaps and uh, just go to town. So I just have a sort of a regular run-of-the-mill Singer heavy-duty sewing machine um, and that's what I sewed this up with and you can see here so you can see some color differences here between the one side and the other and what that is is the fabric running different directions so if you're really picky about that make sure all your lines and your direction of the fabric runs the same way and then the colors will be good so you can see I got a little bit of loose in the around the windshield there um, and a little bit loose in other areas, but what's going to happen is eventually this cover will shrink up a bit. This material always, always shrinks no matter what. So that's how I made up the top here. So let's get into showing you how to put the snaps on and uh, some of my tricks for that. All right, so I've got one to do right here. And so what I do, I'll walk through sort of the top in a so what I do with the, with the top, once I get my patterns all done, get it stitched up, I just want to put a few key buttons, snaps in. <clears throat> I just want to put a few key snaps in. Um, so one is basically the center here, 
up the front uh, on this boat actually I put three across the front to hold the front up and then two on the sides um, just to hold the sides down where they're going to go and then the back corners here and the other corner. So then that gives me my shape and you always want to make sure that you have excess because what's going to happen over time is this top's going to shrink and that was really the issue with the main top on this the main portion was it had shrunk and I'll show you here what people have done over the years is they just basically moved the snaps up so this is where it should have been but then they because the top shrunk they just moved the snaps up which is kind of a bummer because now I've got snaps sitting there but who knows maybe I can use them for something else in the future but um, so when I made the new top I made sure that it had enough slack that it would come down around the outside so after I do that and make sure everything's going to be okay, I'll come in here and, and start putting my snaps on, of course. So I line up the snap. I want to make sure that I've got my other ones out and I start from, in this situation, so I start from the center and work my way out either side and just making sure that everything's going to work well, that it's not going to be too tight so that we can get those snaps on. So this one here, what I do is I'll just take the snap and I want it on my, I put this support in the back here. Um, so basically you stitch in uh, a piece, I guess they call it binding or whatever. So that goes on the edge just to give it some, some extra su um, support so it doesn't rip, the snaps don't rip out. Um, so what I'll do is I'll snap it all down, find my button and I'll take my punch and basically go in the center of where that snap is so that I've got my hole started. Now you can, if I wasn't going through this backing, I can take the snap with my tool and actually cut through this little, I don't know if you can see that, but in the actual snap, it's sharp enough that it will, with the tool, the nub on the tool here, um, you can actually poke it through this canvas material, but because I'm, like I said, I'm going through this actual hard binding, there's no way that I would be able to poke that through without wrecking my snap. So I just use a sharpened off awl. I got it real sharp so that there's a nice fine point on it. So I mark the center of my snap, and I can remove this now to make it easier. Poke it through, make sure that hole is opened up well. Now I guess the other way you could do is if you wanted to burn this and sort of cauterize the hole you could um, heat the all up but I don't bother doing that. Um, so then I just put the snap on the other side of the all and pull it back through because then that centers it on my hole nicely. Push my material out of the way and then I've got my snap through. So now I can take a my backer, put it on, take my tool, line it up in the center, the snap, clamp it down, take it off, and we're done. Oops, snap that on, snap that on, and then we're done. So we're done the back here, I'll work my way around the sides and shortly we'll be done. So I'll put a link down below. these. Snap tools, they're kind of cheap. It, it keeps falling apart a little bit if you snap it open too fast. Um, and I don't really like that this bottom die comes off. There is another attachment for it um, for doing a different style snap. I would have liked that that was solid on there. I didn't realize that it came like that. Um, but this is just from Amazon, so I'll put a link down below um, in the video. Same thing with my snaps here. Um, got them off of Amazon as well. They are stainless steel. So you want to make sure if possible that you can get all stainless steel. And if you're getting the actual screws, oftentimes what will happen is the screw, the snap portion of the screw that screws down will be stainless, but then the screw is not stainless. So you want to make sure that when you order these, that it says that the screw is stainless, which these are as well. So again, I'll, I'll put a link down below to that if you need to pick up some snaps um, that are, and make sure, especially for the marine stuff like this, that everything is fully stainless steel. Oops. So I'll carry on here with the top and uh, get this done shortly.
Gone all the way around and done the um, snaps along the sides. Now, what I have to do is I have to drill in a couple snaps um, where it wasn't. So what I wanted to do, the reason, the other reason why. So now what I have to do is put in some snaps, actually drill in some snaps where there wasn't snaps before, and that's because this boat had. And one of my pet peeves with these bow riders is oftentimes they'll have a cover over the main cockpit and then they'll have a cover over the front for the bow. And what happens is the water runs down the windshield and there's a gap there and water constantly drips in. So if you're ever looking at a bow rider, always check around the windshield to see if the floor is soft because oftentimes that's where the floor rots first is around the base of the windshield where the consoles are. So I don't, that drives me nuts. So I wanted to make a cover that goes all the way over. So that's what this one does. So on the side here, I'm gonna have to drill in some, some snaps and I'm gonna show you a tip about that of how to do it properly. So let's get into that. So here's what I was saying about the front. So I made the cover so that it comes all the way down the windshield. Now, yes, this top is a bit saggy, but it will have support frames or support poles in it to push that up so that the water sheds off. Um, but this is what I was saying where I made that part so that it, the water runs down. Typically the cover, this front cover ends here, the back cover will end at the top of the windshield and all that water runs down the windshield and basically drips in um, at the base of the windshield there in the in the split so I don't like that drives me crazy so that's what I wanted to do that so so on the side here I'm gonna have to add some snaps because there was no snaps before so what we want to do is figure out our spot <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do, this is a bit tight, should work out all right. So I think I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I'm going to do four snaps, I think, on the side here, and that should be good. So my first one.
Now this part I got a little bit too tight, um, which is kind of a bummer, but it'll be okay. So we will, I don't know that I'll be able to get the snaps. Well, maybe I can, so I can follow along. I don't think it matters. We'll put it on the top here. So I'm going to put this one right about here. So I'll take my awl, press it in, try and make a mark in the gel coat, which is right there. So I've got my small little drill bit on my drill. So I'm going to drill that out. This is always the worst part. I hate drilling boats. Okay. So now what you want to do, um, so that the gel coat doesn't crack, um, you want to basically just countersink or round out the top of that hole. Now, somewhere I do have a countersink drill bit, but I can't find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a larger drill bit and run it in reverse to basically round out that hole. And I'll bring you over and show you that after. But So I'm going to take this, I'm in reverse, and I'm just going to do like that. And now I'll bring it in and show you what that did. All right, so there's our hole that I drilled. Clean off that gel coat. And there's our countersink that just rounded out that hole. I don't know if you can make it out nicely, but basically just run it in reverse. You don't need to go deep. And what that'll do is that'll help to stop the gel coat from cracking. If you left it that hard, sharp edge, you can sometimes get basically the gel coat will crack and splinter all over here. So, so now I've got my snap here and my screwdriver. And the other thing is you don't want to, um, if possible, don't put these in with the drill um, because you'll have a greater tendency to split them or sort of crack the gel coat. And I'm going to show you, I actually just cracked it. So let me back this out and show you what happened. So listen, we're not all perfect. And what I should have done is drilled that hole larger. But here's what happened. So if you can see, I've cracked that gel coat. So that's a bit of a bummer. So what that tells me is the drill bit that I used was not quite big enough. So I'm going to have to go up in size. Man, that's a bummer. Well, I mean, that's how it goes sometimes, right? We're not all perfect. So I just, anyways, so the next one I want to have right about there. I'll get my all again. Mark my spot. Right there. Okay, and we'll do the same thing, countersink that hole. Okay, so I'm down to the last snap um, that I'm drilling in and putting on. So one thing that I just want to mention is with these stainless steel screw and snaps, you have to be really careful that if the hole isn't big enough, and this used to happen to me all the time when installing the tops on an aluminum boat, you'll break this screw really easily. And that's a big bummer. That's a big pain in the butt to try and get that out. 
So if you start screwing this thing in and the, and the um, again, that's also why we use the, basically a screwdriver. I like this one because it's ratcheting, but we use this. If it starts to feel really, really tight, stop. Back it back out and maybe just open up the hole a little bit um, because you don't want to break these off and they're very easy to break off. They're very, very soft metal and they will break off easily. So again, drill your hole out, give it maybe a little wiggle of the drill bit, just a little bit. Um, if your drill bit just is a little bit undersized like my, mine is, um, take the your larger drill bit and remember to put it in reverse so that you can countersink that hole. And then putting these things in, like I said, just make sure that it's not too tight and it goes in nice and easy. Shouldn't have to really force it in. Just like that, tighten it down nice and snug and that's it. So again, we'll line up. I'll put my other snap on on the other side. Line up where I want it, poke the hole. Push it up from the bottom. I can take my other snap off now. Just make sure that's good like that. So I'll take my top cap, put it on the end of my awl, pull it through the hole, give it a little wiggle, which will open up that hole and allow you to push it through a little easier. Put my bottom of my snap on, my little hat. Line up my vice grip tool. And make sure you get this straight because if you don't, you'll wreck the snap, clamp it down, and you're done. So these, um, you'll notice I, I had to take the rubber handle off of these and just crimp this down in the vise a little bit more. They're just cheapies. Um, they're like 50 bucks or something like that, so they're relatively cheap. So doing that is all right. I mean, I'm not overly concerned. And you just want these, myself personally, I don't want to crank them down too tight. So you want it so that it just touches when you close the jaws up. You don't want it overly tight because then you'll distort and wreck this snap. Um, so it doesn't need to be crazy, crazy tight, just like that, especially if you've got any gap in here because that adds a little bit of space or, sorry, a, a bunch of material. Um, so again, you just want that the jaws to just close lightly um, in order for it to snap close. All right, so that's it for the snaps. Now we'll get the poles put in. So for this cover on the front, it had a nice telescopic pole um, like this. This is gonna be my one for the back. Um, the one in back here was just a chunk of wood that somebody had cut up and uh, I mean, that'll work in a pinch, but these ones are better because you can really adjust them nicely. If the cover starts to get a bit tight, you can lower it down, or if it stretches out, you can obviously push it up a little bit higher, but I like to use those. So in the front, what I'll do is I'll climb up in there and just push it up so that it's just nice and tight. You don't want it too tight, but just so it looks like the water's gonna shed off. And I will take my black marker and just mark a dot of where I want to put the snap. Now you can sew in a patch or um, basically a reinforcement spot for the snap, but I think it'll be okay. I'm going to try and get it off the one side. It'll be all right. And if I have to fix it later, I'll fix it later. But sewing in that patch, I was getting so frustrated with sewing this top up as it was. Um, I just couldn't be bothered. So I'm just going to leave it like that and it should be okay. So I'll crawl up in there, snap this on, and then I'll show you these, those kits actually come with, and I'll zoom in a little bit better to show you, but these kits come with a hole poker and a hammer tool. So if you don't wanna buy that Amazon tool, these kits actually, these, that kit that I showed you comes with the tool to do it. Um, and so what you do is you put the button in and hammer down on the other end to close it up and I'll show you how that's done here. Uh, for myself, I've got a big chunk of wood and I'll put it on the wood and uh, show you how we do that. So let's get under there and push that top up.
I'll just mark this here where I want it to go. I'll climb back out now and just take a look. What do you think? That's going to work perfect. So that's got a nice flow to it and the water should shed off actually. I've got a little bit of a dip in the front there on the one side, which is okay because what I can do is if the pole, you know what, I'm gonna push the pole forward a bit and just double check. So, my pole here, raise it up, clamp it. So if my pole goes right there, Okay, that should be perfect um, because the water should shed off this way. I hope, um, I hope I'm not gonna get, I might get a little bit of pooling there, but when I pull this part up, yeah, that should be just fine. I think that'll work okay right where it is. So I'll just mark this spot with my Sharpie. And what I'll end up doing is I'll probably lower this down just a touch, just like that, because I think that'll be good. Okay. Let's see if I can see my marks. Yeah, perfect. All right, and I'll get you in here closer so you can see. Here's my I always try to pull at the snap. Don't pull the whole top. I mean, I know we do it sometimes, but you will wreck it. So there's my second mark. My first one was up here. So I like the second mark a little bit better. So that's where I'm gonna wanna put the top piece or the snap. So what I'll do is I'll get my punch. So this is the punch. Okay, so that's to punch the hole, right? And we take our base, and the base, the one side has a dimple, and the other side is sort of flat for putting the snap on. So this dimple side, basically what you're doing is centering that. Inside that, so you're centering the punch inside that dimple to kind of push that through, so. What I'll do, I don't know if you'll be able to see this well, but I will line this up as best I can here and maybe even try to grab this extra material. Oops, put it the right way. Okay. Try not to move that. I can find that dimple right there put it down on my wood and hopefully you can see that so I've got my die on the bottom and my tool on the top take my hammer and that should cut my hole Yep. Needs just a little bit more of a punch. There we go. So now I've made my hole, I'll get my snap. So now we're gonna have to do the opposite. So I'll punch this, put the poke the snap through. 
hopefully. And all the way through the up. Sometimes it can just be tricky finding the hole. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now that we're through, so now what we have to do is basically, we have to flip this over or get our top die on the top. So I'll just take it with the flat spot, okay, and put it in the center of my snap, like this. And I'll just flip this over so I can see the bottom. And I'll take my bottom side of the snap like that. Now I'm going to take my punch tool like this to close that rivet over. So I'll just put it in the center like that. Grab my hammer. And there we go. So there's that snap done. Okay. So now I can snap that into my pole. So my pole has a snap in the top of it. And now we've got our front pole done. Just like that. Perfect. So now we'll just repeat it with the back one. So I'm going to repeat sort of a similar process here for the back one. Um, it's going to be a bit trickier because obviously I can't I'm by myself at the moment, otherwise I get someone to close the top and close me in here. But what I'm going to do is snap this back as far as I can and then uh, crawl underneath and find a spot for that pole, which I think is going to be sort of right in the middle here, right where I am at the moment. All right, so now I'll just repeat the process of hammering that snap on. Oops. So now the dreaded top installation is complete. Get this stuff out. So there you go on the top. Um, so it is a bit loose on either side. So we'll just watch it and see if it um, pools a lot of water. What I can do is I can actually add, I can take that pole out and add another one so that there's actually two poles that helps it come up. I find these boats that these, like this, these bow riders and that, especially with this sun pad, the water often pools on the sun pad here. Thanks for following along. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. There'll be more coming on this boat and uh, a lot more content on other vehicle stuff. So thanks. Please hit the like and subscribe and take care.